I thought it would be fun to take the Commonwealth of Man and the United Nations of Earth, set them both on an AI player, and let them play and see which one came out victorious in a game of Stellaris. Now my research indicates that this video won't be very successful, but you know, I like this idea so much that I just had to do it anyway. So if you, you're seeing this, I appreciate your support. So on the Commonwealth of Man, I'm going to leave both of these at their defaults. So the Commonwealth of Man is a military, di military dictatorship. They have nationalistic zeal, the distinguished admiralty, xenophobe, fanatic militarist, adaptive, nomadic, and wasteful, and their origins lost colony. So for the United Nations of Earth, their beacon of liberty, ideal, idealistic foundation, they're democratic, xenophile, fanatic, egalitarian, adaptive, nomadic, and wasteful, and their origin is prosperous unification. So I'm going to go back to the Commonwealth of Man. I'm going to go to my settings real quick before I start. Galaxy size, size, I set it to tiny, get the game going that much quicker. Elliptical, set all these to zero. For some reason, I had to set AI empires to zero because when I set it to one, I got two. If I set it to zero, I get one. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on there. Turn everything else off that would affect empires. Left AI, AI, aggressive is, AI aggressiveness normal. I left this on Ensign because when I assign an AI player to my empire, It'll be an ensign. I don't want one AI to have an unfair advantage over the other one. So I'll click play. This drops me into my empire. There's my uh, opening screen. So I'll bring up the console commands. I'm going to set my uh, empire to AI. To an AI. Human AI, AI is now on. I'm also going to go to observe mode so I can see everything that's going on. Close that, and that should get me to where I want to be. So there is the Commonwealth of Man. And if I scroll out, there's the United Nations Earth, way over on the other side of the galaxy. And it looks like they get a much bigger starting position than I do. No other empires around, so that's good. This looks like an absolutely perfect setup for the game I wanted to play. They're on opposite sides of the galaxy. That means they have plenty of time to research and strengthen and expand and, and do their thing before they run into each other. So I, what I plan to do is put this game on a fast speed and slow it down occasionally to see where they're at, what each one's doing, what they're building, what, what their strategy is, and to play until the, it becomes obvious who the victor's going to be. So with that, I'm going to take it off pause and we'll see what happens. One more thing before I unpause the game, I wanted to take a quick look at the starting positions for each one. And I'm not sure why United Nations of Earth gets such a bigger starting position than the Commonwealth of Man. I noticed that other AI empires don't do that, so I'm not sure what the difference is. But look at the Commonwealth of Man, click here. So they haven't started their research yet. So we'll take a look at their outliner. They've got one shipyard, they've got one military fleet rated at 194, and a construction ship and a science ship. So for the United Nations of Earth, they've got three they've got three colonies, a shipyard, two fleets, and Two construction ships and three science ships, so they're getting a much better start than the than the uh, Commonwealth of Man. Like I said, I'm not sure why, but I think I'll just let this play out and we'll see what happens. So with that being said, I'm going to take this off off uh, pause after I go back to uh, observer mode. I'm about two years into game time now, and uh, I thought I'd pause it and take a look. As you can see, the United Nations of Earth has already started expanding. So the Commonwealth of Man, they're just now getting out of their first system. They're constructing our star base. This science ship has no orders yet. Their fleet still got five corvettes. Research is something I'm always interested in. So they're researching AI research speed and hydroponics farming and nanochemicals. In the research they've got all the their starting techs, setting up point defense, red laser, hyperdrive one. And I've wondering if these are the same as the United Nations of Earth. But this is a quick glance at all their starting techs. Going over to the United Nations of Earth, they've already got somebody who's unhappy with them. They've got some first contact protocols going on. Take a look at their research real quick, their technology. They're building, they're researching research station output and national capacity for soldier jobs, ground defense planning. Cer Ceramo Metal Materials. It's for their researched items.
Looks like they've got about the same thing as the Commonwealth of Man. Not really going to go into it here and see what's what and do a one to one comparison, but it uh, looks like it's pretty even. And at the summary screen here, they've got uh, their power is 540 compared to the Commonwealth of Man is 311. Their fleet power is 954 versus 322 for Commonwealth of Man, and they've got 77 pops versus 30 for the Commonwealth of Man. So they've still got a pretty good head start. I think I'll shut up for a while and just let the game play. About 20 years of game time have elapsed now, and it really doesn't look like the Commonwealth of Man has closed the gap very much in the United Nations of Earth. Their uh, power is 867 to 583. Closing the gap, fleet strength and pop, but they're still pretty far apart. Territory is larger for the United Nations of Earth than it is for the Commonwealth of Man. So with the Commonwealth of Man, they now have four planets, a shipyard, an anchorage and one fleet only and they've got three construction ships and three science ships doing their thing and they've got looks like three first contacts going on as for the united nations of earth they've got one they've got four colonies a shipyard a trade hub two anchorages and a star base two fleets one at 1.1 1 .1 and one at 835 they've got one two three four five construction ships one colony ship one, two, three, four, five science ships, and an army and some factions, and a disabled gateway. And we'll let the game roll on. Now's a good time to drop in on the empires and see how they're doing because their borders have just now touched. They've been a hostile fleet here, but let's see what's going on. The contacts, United Nations of Earth, nothing really going on with them yet, so I don't think war has been declared yet. Let's take a look at their ships. So they've got, well, let's take a look at their outliner. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colonies, some stations, and Star bases and shipyards, three military fleets, 
Third Fleet's all Corvettes. The First Fleet's destroyers are in Corvettes. Fleet details. So they've got some uh, energy siphons, red laser shields and armor. They haven't utilized these slots yet. It's an AI, I'm not surprised. Take a look at the Commonwealth of Man. Hadn't established any kind of relationship with the United Nations of Earth yet, so. Take a look at the Commonwealth of Man's fleets real quick. Looks like he's got some destroyers and corvettes also. No energy siphon. He's got a small UV laser and small disruptors and an assortment of the shields and armor. Nothing in the auxiliary slots. So I imagine they'll declare war on each other pretty soon. We'll see what happens. The two empires have met. Go to the contact screen and so minus 94 for the Commonwealth of Man. And I imagine it's the same the other way. And they're at a minus 94 also. But there's no war been declared yet, no spying going on. So everything's peaceful and hunky dory right now. Well, the war didn't happen as quickly as I thought. I'm going to drop in on the United Nations of Earth, take a look at the relations, and they're still nowhere near war. The relations are only at minus minus 101, and the both empires have continued to expand. So we'll let the game roll on a little bit more and, and see what happens. I've noticed that these scores are closing in. I've noticed that the Commonwealth of Man has closed the gap on the United Nations of Earth when it comes to uh, fleet power. I guess the advantages of being a dictatorship have come into play finally. He's still behind in population. Looks like he's fighting somebody because it's dropped all of a sudden. finally broken out between the Commonwealth of Man and the United Nations of Earth, so I thought it'd be nice to pause and take a look at the stats a little bit. So, United, uh, United Nations of Earth, they've, they've got an advantage over the Commonwealth of Man, both fleets and power and population. Take a look at the war goals. It looks like the defender is the Commonwealth of Man and the aggressor is the United Nations of Earth, so I expected it to be the other way around since uh, the uh, Commonwealth of Man is a dictatorship. Let's take a look at UNE fleet and see what it has. Cruisers, destroyers, and corvettes. Take a look at the cruisers real quick. And they've got like a class two fusion reactor, class two hyperdrive. Well, I won't read them off, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, but they focus on lasers. They've got shields and armor, mostly armor. Plus they use their, after, they've got afterburners, so they've used the auxiliary slots. Well, let's compare that to the Commonwealth of Man. Find a, so if I'm one of the, uh, Commonwealth of Man's big fleet. He's also got. They've also got cruisers and destroyers and corvettes. They focus on large pla on large plasma throwers and medium disruptors. They've got an assortment of shields and armor, and they're using their auxiliary slots also. They've got a class four antimatter reactor, high, class two hyperdrive. So it looks like they're a little more advanced technologically than the United Nations of Earth, so we'll see how that plays into the war. Traditions, they've adopted prosperity, mercantile, and expansion. United Nations of Earth, they've adopted expansion, diplomacy, domination, and prosperity, so they focus a little more on traditions and uh, unity, it looks like. United Nations of Earth has 18 planets under their control. Whereas the Commonwealth of Man has 13. So, except for technology, it looks like the United Nations of Earth has a slight edge. But I think I'll let this go on and we'll see how it progresses. Right now it's 1% to 1%. These are the borders before the war started. 
And as the war drags on, it looks like the war exhaustion has taken its toll on the UNE, but still a long ways to go. The war is now over, and except for a breakaway faction, I don't see much of a shift in the borders. I was wondering why the uh, Commonwealth of Man did not completely annihilate the United Nations of Earth, so I dropped into the contacts to see, and I found out that they became a vassal underneath the, underneath the Commonwealth of Man, so that pretty well ends the game. Um, so despite their uh, early advantage in the game starting position and their advantages during the first war, the uh, overwhelming might of the Commonwealth's military, which they built up steadily, was just too much for them to, to prevail against. So I think it, I'll play another game maybe and I'll, I'll take the place of the UNE to see if I can do any better. That's for a future video. So hope you enjoyed this. If you like this, like it. And this is Rich from Loner Strategy Games. I'll see you later. Bye.